Hi, I'm Melanie from UWorld. We're looking at next-gen practice questions from the UWorld question banks. Now we have an overview of the extended multiple response, NGN question type. This one's gonna look pretty familiar with a few differences. This first example is the select all that apply, which is gonna look familiar. We also call those SATA. A lot of people just say SATA for these. So this one is a type of SATA, but we're calling it an extended multiple response because you can have up to 10 options now. Previously, you would typically see five or six options, but these look a little scarier because they have up to 10. Now, this is just a silly example about animals. We're gonna look at a real actual, you know, next-gen style. This is what you'll see hopefully on the NCLEX in a minute, but just starting off with a silly example so we can kind of talk through the mechanics and scoring of it here. So this example asks us, which of the following are animals? Select all that apply. So starting off, we can kind of look over our options. I'm gonna start at the beginning here. We know an elephant is an animal for sure, so we'll click that one. We know a wolf is an animal, so we'll click that one as well. And you know, like other SATA items, you can go back and you can actually unclick if you change your mind. Maybe elephant's not an animal, and then you can click it back again. Looking down, a dog is an animal. Rose, bear, for sure. They're just big dogs, really. And then you get to dandelion. Maybe you get a little mixed up, you're nervous, you click it, you're like, oh, lion, click that one as well. And then you kind of look through again, and then you hit submit. And then we can look at our scoring model here. As this is a next gen style item, it actually gives you partial credit, which is really exciting because as we're used to, the dreaded SATA item will give us points only if it's answered completely correctly. So that's not the case anymore. Going forward, starting on April 1st, all the SATAs that you see on your NCLEX, whether it be in a case study or not a case study, are going to be scored where it's partial credit. So for this example, because it told us to select all that apply, we could have selected all the answers. We didn't. Here we selected the four that were correct, and then we selected one that was incorrect. So all total, this gives us a score of three-fourths of the points that we would have gotten for this item. That doesn't mean you could have gotten four points and then you only got three points. That means that you got three-fourths of what you could have gotten credit for for this item. And it's structured this way because, again, it's select all that apply. You could have clicked every option, but there has to be some repercussion for that, which is why they knock off a point for each of these incorrect answers you give so that, you know, you don't select every option because then you wouldn't get very many points. So the second example here is distinct from the other one because it's not a select all that apply. It actually tells you in the question stem here how many options you need to select. This one here says which four animals have feet. And you don't see that line here that says select all that apply. So it kind of can trigger you to know like, oh, I can't select all the ones I want to. I need to focus on finding the four correct answers. So let's look down here at the options. Starting off, we know for sure, a fox has feet, so we'll click on that one. And then fish, no feet on fish, so we can skip that one. Elephant, they've got big old feet, we'll click that one. Snake, no feet. Dog, absolutely. So now we're at three. Get down to dolphin. Maybe you think to yourself, a dolphin, well, the rest of these have the mammals. Maybe you're tired. Maybe you're just like a little tripped up, so you click like maybe a dolphin, sure. And then you have your four, and then you get to otter, and you think to yourself, they have feet for sure. Let me click that one as well. It's actually gonna stop you from clicking. You like physically cannot click a fifth option here. So if you would like to select otter, you have to go back and unclick dolphin. And then you can pick otter because it will limit you to four. But here I think we, we go with our gut. We're gonna stick with dolphin, leave off otter, and now we have our four options. It won't let us pick anymore, so we'll go forward from here and look at the scoring. So here we can see that we felt confident, the fox, the elephant, dog, those all have feet. We got three points, that's great. But then looking here at dolphin, the previous example told us that we lost a point for selecting the incorrect response. That's not true here because it told us we have to pick four. So they're not gonna take credit away from you because they forced you to pick four. You can actually select less, but they wouldn't let you select more. But the instructions did say pick four options. So you picked four, you followed the instructions. So here, the one that you missed that was incorrect, you just get zero points for it. So all total, you get three out of the four possible points. 
Otter was the correct option, so you could have gotten one more point here. So four was the amount possible. You got three out of four. You didn't lose anything for selecting the incorrect option because they told you to select four options. Now, this doesn't mean that you would have gotten four points worth of credit for this item. This just means for the value of this question, you got three-fourths of it, which is that exciting change that gives you partial credit scoring across the NCLEX, where all multiple response item types will give you partial credit, whether or not they're in a case study. So now let's switch over and look at an actual NGN-style multiple response item from our UWorld question bank. So looking here, this one is part of a case study, so it has that split screen like all the NGN items do. We're reviewing here, this is a patient who was brought in after some nausea, vomiting, polydipsia, polyuria. We're just gonna kind of read through the notes so we know what's going on with our patient before we jump into the question over there. Pregnancy status is unknown, they're drowsy, abnormal respirations, the vital signs are kind of wacky, low blood pressure, a little scary there, and our blood sugar is quite elevated. And then also you notice here there's two tabs for this clinical data area. So you can click over and look at the laboratory results as well. So this particular, this is in the middle of the case study. So this is item four out of six of the case study. So this was our original note. They had a blood glucose of 600. And then on item four here, we've been given an updated note where they're telling us, hey, it's nine o'clock now. Your blood sugar is 573. So that's an update. And then our potassium is 5.7. So we'll keep that in mind as we go over and answer the question here. So this one is asking us, which of the following interventions should the nurse take? And it's saying, hey, you know, the nurses review the information from the laboratory results. That's your trigger. Hey, go look at some lab results because we added them to the question there. So we, we did do that. We looked at those results. Check mark there. And then we need to pick out the interventions the nurse should take. Now this one is a SATA item. So you can select up to all of them if you want to, or you can just pick one. This one has eight options, which looks a little bit scarier than maybe one of those previous SATA items where they only had five or six. So let's go through here. So looking at this patient, we're definitely going to be giving them some insulin because their blood glucose is so elevated. So to think about it, we're going to give them insulin. Are we nervous that we're going to drop the blood sugar too low? Potentially, they may need some support from some dextrose. So that's kind of why this is an option here. You could give them five dextrose in saline. So it may make sense. So we'll go ahead and click that one. Another option, administering insulin. Like I said, absolutely, we have to bring that blood sugar down. So we'll click that one. Administering sodium polystyrene, sulfonate, rectally. That is given to lower potassium. And this patient, it's not really appropriate yet, I don't think. ABGs, we absolutely need to keep an eye on those. She's definitely acidotic and we need to know how her levels are doing. Absolutely, we need to be checking a blood glucose every hour to keep a close eye on this to make sure we're not over or under medicating with the insulin. Continuous cardiac monitoring, super important for this patient. She is acidotic, her potassium is a little out of whack. That means that she is at risk for having a dysrhythmia. So we definitely need to keep an eye on that cardiac monitoring. Strict intake and output, absolutely important. We're gonna be giving a lot of fluids here. And then monitoring electrolytes, also really important, that potassium especially. So we'll go ahead and submit. And then we can see our scoring here. For this one, we got five out of six points. But if we're looking at it, we actually click six correct options. And that's because this is a plus minus scoring. And you can see that written down here. And there's also this pop-up on UWorld site where you can see a little bit more about this scoring model to help explain it. But for the plus minus one here, we did get points for the ones we selected. Correct, 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 correct. So we got six points here, but then this one was not correct because right now it's not yet appropriate to give the 5% dextrose. That is appropriate to give later on for this patient, but that's a whole nother story. So, so for right now, we missed one of the options. So we got knocked off a point. We got six correct points, missed one. Five out of six is the value of our score for this question. So five-sixths of the credit, which is awesome because before, like I said, if you missed this option, you would have gotten the whole question wrong on NCLEX. So this is exciting that you can get five-sixths of the points. So that wraps up multiple response item type. Whether you're taking the current NCLEX 
or the next generation NCLEX coming on April 1st, 2023, practicing NGN questions will help you prepare for the exam and bedside practice. Visit nursing.uroll.com for more information and to see our options for RN and PN and to start practicing today. Thank you.